So uh, here's a huge one. Um, uh, oxytocin, um, uh, uh, also called Pitocin and Cytosinon, um, young in a bag, I think of it as, right? It's the, what it does is it binds in the muscle and just the way that progesterone was telling the cells to stop listening uh, to electrical impulses, oxytocin is the opposite. It's like putting on giant giraffe ears uh, to make it listen more to electricity, so to make it more uh, electrically oriented, right? It, in human beings, when you're experiencing oxytocin as a neurotransmitter, you're more connected. You're more sensitive, you're more loving, you're more receptive, you're more open-hearted. Um, so uh, uh, heartbreakingly, when they put that in your arm through an IV drip, you now uh, lose access to it as a neurotransmitter. It shuts off um, being released from the pituitary um, uh, and uh, uh, is now not in your brain because it can't cross the blood-brain barrier. So um, FYI, if you're receiving Pitocin, you are engaging in a weird drug experiment um, uh, that you, you know, having your brain function under conditions it's never functioned under before. Um, uh, that said, um, uh, some people do worse with it than others, and this it's really important to me to break out by who's who constitutionally. Um, they use it to, they use Pitocin to augment an active phase that's sluggish. Uh, they use it to start a labor if the cervix is ripe already. So oxytocin is your drug for active phase. It's for pushing active phase forward. Um, people who've had it have more pain. They have less ability to bond with the baby, which is a drag. It, it washes out very quickly, but there's often a moment of, oh my god, it looks like a Martian. You know, I'm supposed to be happy now. I feel weird. Um, uh, and uh, use of the monitor. Um, uh, they they have to. It's not high risk, but we have to treat her like she's high risk. It's this weird thing they do. Um, so uh, our considerations clinically is that. Um, uh, for yin deficiency patients, I hate seeing it used in yin deficiency patients, and if I have the ear of a doc or a midwife, I would explain to them what a yin deficient patient looks like and say categorically use a quarter the amount. I promise you, you'll get the same amount with a homeopathic dose of Pitocin. Um, and uh, uh, certainly I've had, I've had them listen, I've had them dose it lower, and it's been better. Um, uh, that there's this, you know, the uterus can overstimulate. It's very individual. The same uh, dose that will give me huge contractions might give you tiny contractions. Um, so uh, uh, it's it's kind of the wrong treatment for a yin deficient patient anyway. Because if if I'm yin deficient and my active labor isn't progressing well. I promise you the reason why is um, that I'm having trouble dilating my cervix, right? My cervix is cranky and achy and the indeficiency and whatever. It's, it's not moist and juicy enough, and that's why it's not dilating. It's not that the contractions aren't strong enough. Um, so if they had any other drugs, they would use them now, but they don't. Um, so... Uh, so that's how it is. Um, they, they, they need relaxing and not contract. So obviously for yin chu patients, I would like to be there in the birth rubbing their bottoms and shaking them and massaging their liver channels and doing acupuncture if I feel like doing it. But really I find like the acupuncture, acupressure works better. Um, uh, oh. Here we go. There we are. Um, Young deficiency and damp patients, actually, they do fine. Um, certainly, it's the right treatment for them physically. Their young is being muffled by the damp, right? The waves can't get through. No, no, no. So the pitocin that makes the cells more sensitive to the um, to, to the electrical waves actually very welcome. It's it's all right for them. Uh, blood deficient patients. Um, 
these are the ones to really watch out for. They're in danger of not emotionally coping well with the labor anyway, right? I see somebody walking in with pale lips and pale eyes and everything who I know is blood deficient. I reach for my sear in red needles because I know she's going to be super needle, super um, needle sensitive. The same is true of labor. Um, that uh, you walk into the room and if the person's complaining of pain at two centimeters, which they often are in my hospital, I, I kind of have diagnosed blood deficiency uh, until proven otherwise, right? Either, either that or they have um, blood stasis due to cold in their uterus, uh, which they should have taken their whinging tongue when they had a chance before they were pregnant. Um, so it's the, I most would, you know, I try not to argue with the docs much, but I most would say, how about could you give us an hour to try the, you know, acupressure um, first with the blood deficiency patients, because politically it's most worth spending my limited capital on them, because they will most do worse with the oxytocin, um, right, because of the coping mechanism that's destabilized by the oxytocin uh, being absent for their brain, I'm most worried about them psychologically. Uh, here is a slide I just wanted to share with you of Pitocin not working anyway. This is a Qi deficient patient at the very end of their labor. Um, uh, Take a look at how the Pitocin is dragging the contraction up to be a very big contraction in the sense that it works very high, um, right? The peak of that contraction is all the way up at the top of the monitor, but there's nothing to it. That It has no shoulders, you'd say. The, the hill, there's not very much working uh, uh, contraction there. It should be much more of a waveform. Imagine if it was a tube of toothpaste you were squeezing, it would be like boom, right? There wouldn't be much, there wouldn't be much uh, smoothness there. There's no earth in that contraction. Okay, so that was, uh, that was uh, oxytocin. Here's cervidel cytotec. Um, uh, it's used to ripen the cervix, so this is in latent phase. Um, uh, it fills up the receptor site for the prostaglandins, which make the tissue itself more stretchy. It makes it more sensitive to being stretched, and then when it's stretched, it secretes it, uh, these prostaglandins, to its own, and it binds in its own site and makes it stretchier, right? So it's one of those little feedback loops we love. Um, uh, we call it a virtuous cycle as opposed to a vicious cycle. Um, uh, it makes it, the prostaglandins in place makes it easier for the oxytocin to bind to the receptor site. And um, I think most of us know sperm has a lot of prostaglandins in it. So Cytotec, um, uh, uh, misoprostol, um, is, a, is delivered as a little pill. Um, one, um, you know, ejaculate, one sperm load uh, has of pretty much 50% of what's in one of the pills. So you only need two to make the whole functional dose 